So we will cover about what is the evidence-based medicine, then what is evidence-based medicine and what it is not. Okay. How we can have an approach to the evidence-based medicine, different kind of steps that has been involved, steps in practicing this evidence-based medicine. And then we will uh, just uh, find how research question should be framed, what is research question, why it is important, what different components should be there in the research question, so that we will get a maximum means uh, number of uh, research publications, right? Right? In a proper way. How this, uh, this PICO criteria is used in framing the research question. And then I will, in short, I will just brush how literature searching is done or by what are different kind of these uh, databases, search engines, right? But I am not here going to show you any demonstration because the thing is that unless and until you do by yourself, you will not learn it. Just only just mere seeing a few slides, few diagrams, few figures, it, will, it won't help. So evidence-based medicine, the, this evidence-based medicine whose philosophical origin extends back to mid-19th century Paris and earlier in the constitution's explicit and judicious use of a current-based evidence in making the decisions about the care of the individual patients. This term basically coined by the David Sackett. Right? He has very nicely papers, all your publications you can also go because I have borrowed most of these uh, sentences and things from his papers only. Okay? It's, it's the practice or uh, the practice of evidence-based medicine means integrating individual clinical expertise. Integration is there for the clinical expertise. We used to tell doctor used to do practice because patient is a person, he will try this drug, that drug, Kabhi ye first drug mein usko asar aa jata hai. Right? So he will have his own judgment. Nahi, ye isko diya to iska asar nahi hone wala hai. Right? So it is a own clinical expertise and with the best available external clinical evidences from the systematic search. More knowledge about doctor, what he will do when deciding the things. Right? Why do doctors, they used to change medicines most of the time? Individual clinical expertise means the proficiency and judgment that we individual clinicians acquire through the clinical experiences and the clinical practice. The practice may be of one year, ten year, right? Most of the doctors, they also used to do practice for 30 years, 35 years. So, and that's why patient used to prefer ki jiska jada practice hai, hum uske paas jayenge because he has seen so many patients getting recovered, right? So, he used to go to that persons. Here the expertise is reflected in many ways, but especially in more effective and efficient diagnosis, external clinical evidences means clinically relevant research, often than the basic sciences of medicine, but especially from the patient-centered clinical research. So it is done in, by the two different ways, like uh, knowing the accuracy and precision of the diagnostic test. So doctor, doctor should also know this accuracy and precision of this test, right? And even the power of prognostic markers also and the e efficacy and safety of the therapeutics, rehabilitative and the preventive regimes. So a very good person uh, or the doctor, he should know this, all these things. Now, about coming to the external clinical evidences, both uh, it uh, invalidates previously accepted diagnostic test and treatment and replaces them with a new one that are more powerful, more accurate, and more efficacious, and very safer. So the good doctor, what he do? The good doctor uses both individual clinical expertise and the best available external evidences, and neither alone is enough. So he do his own judgment. What is best available and Really, it has used previously for such kind of patients. So he used to take decisions. So without clinical expertise, practice risk becoming tyrannized and by external evidences for even excellent external evidences may be inapplicable to or inappropriate for an individual patients. Evidence-based medicine, basically, what uh, means we can do? In evidence-based medicine, uh, what we can do, we can Convert these information needs into a answerable questions. We can also track down with maximum efficiency the best evidences with which to answer them. That thing we can do. Now, again, we can do 
critically apprise that evidence for its validity. How to apprise such an ev evidence? So it is basically by the to know the closely, uh, this uh, closeness to the truth and usefulness in terms of the clinical applicability. Then again, what we can do, we can integrate these appraisals with our clinical expertise and then apply it in practice. So these are these, these things basically doctor or the person he used to do. And then again, uh, he has to evaluate once with own performance. Evidence based medicine is not a cookbook medicine basically. It's not a ye dala, ye dala, to ye apna produce ho gaya, right? There is a science behind that. It requires a bottom-up approach that integrates the best external evidence with individual clinical expertise and patient's choice. It cannot result in a salvage cookbook approaches to individual patient's care. So that's why the external clinical evidence can, it can inform but can never replace the individual clinical expertise. So again, it is very, very important. Individual clinical expertise is again very, very important. And it is this expertise that decides whether the external evidence applies to the individual patient at all. Evidence-based medicine, what it is and what it is not. The same thing uh, which was, uh, I was in, informing you. Evidence-based medicine is not restricted to the randomized trials and meta-analysis. Right? It involves tracking down the best external evidence with which to answer our clinical question. And despite its ancient origin, evidence-based medicine remains a relatively young discipline whose positive impacts are just beginning to be validated and it will continue. So basically, uh, the important thing is that in evidence-based medicine, so we need to this, uh, uh, see the things that are mostly available and even these practitioners, they used to take their own uh, decisions as per their own clinical expertise, right? So, in uh, this uh, EVM, so there are different steps that are being involved, right? So, we will come to the framing of the research question, right? So, in framing of the research question, there is a concept called PICO. Is the patient, then uh, I for the intervention, C for the comparator, and PICO, O is the outcome, right? So, the once we come to the patient, so patient, it can be of different age groups. It can be a young children, young, uh, young means, uh, adolescents, right? So we need to define the population. Then interventions. So different kind of misinterventions are there. The standard of care or drug A versus drug B. And then we need to miss, uh, so these are the intervention. Then a comparator, it can be a standard of care or some another vaccines or things. And then O, O means the outcome. So that outcome we can also miss no uh, by this, this mortality, incidence, prevalence, or if in terms of health economic, this uh, economic evaluation, if we used to see, then it, it comes in, uh, in terms of this cost, college, life year gains, right? So once we, uh, so a good research question, it should have all these PICO criteria, okay. Just I have just informed you about the PICO, but just we will see that uh, how we can approach to the EBM is uh, basically it's based around the five different steps. So one step first is the defining a clinical relevant question. So that was, I was informing you that we can design by the term PICO. So doctor, it searches for the information to find the correct diagnosis. Second step is the searching for the best evidences. So here doctor searches for the evidence to support the finding from the step one. And in step three, what he do? He will assess the quality of the evidence. So doctor, he has to ensure that the quality and the, where, whether this uh, reliability is high. And fourth step is that acting on the evidence to form a clinical decision. Means he has to take a decision, whether the disease is there or not, and after that, what kind of treatment he want to give. And then lastly, about the interpreting the process. So here, doctor and patient assess if the intended outcome is achieved and, uh, and adjust treatment decisions accordingly, if it is needed. So 
important steps are first ask the focus question, track down the evidence, then critically appraise the evidence for its validity, fixed size precision, and then apply the evidence in practice. Now, this pyramid I think you have seen most of the time, right? So, the best evidence is synthesized from the meta-analysis and uh, the whatever the papers published in uh, from this uh, randomized uh, control trial, right? So this is a, a pyramid basically. So the last is the here means uh, the base is by the editorials or the expert opinion, right? Then comes the case series, a uh, case report. Now different kind of questions are there, like uh, background question. It's just a very broad question. The background question is now here. The uh, suppose the patient is presenting with the MI. So the background question, what it will inform? So it will informs about what are the symptoms and signs of uh, someone if it is presenting with the myocardial infarction? What are the diagnostic tests that are available for detecting this myocardial infarction? What are the cause of this myocardial infarction? And then what are the treatments of mis uh, treatment modalities that are available for treating the myocardial infarction? infection patients. Now the foreground question, it's very, very specific. So if you see this question, this, uh, it's about the, actual, uh, about the actual patient care decisions and actions. So here doctor has to take decision basically for the treatment of different components. So here the question will be in patients with MI, does uh, this cholesterol lowering therapy compared to the placebo will reduce the mortality? So all these questions, this like, the patients is their P, means what are the populations, but it is here, it's not specified, but we can have a different kind of like a population. Then I means this intervention like uh, dose of the cholesterol lowering therapy. Here it is compared with the a placebo, right? And the outcome is the mortality. So different kind of research questions are there for these uh, therapeutic studies, diagnostic studies, prognostic studies, prevalence studies, cost effectiveness studies, and even the, the quality of life. So these are difficult, uh, means, uh, means these are exposed uh, so by this information. So here just I have just earlier just informed you about this uh, PICO. So P means, uh, means, who are, uh, means who are you interested in studying in your review? Intervention, what is the intervention or the group of intervention you want to test? Comparison, what will be the intervention if it is up compared to and the outcomes? So here just I tried to give one example. Now, this recently the COVID has been, uh, we have faced COVID pandemic and we are still facing it. So suppose the example of my question is, is the plasma exchange therapy is beneficial in the COVID-19 patients? So these are the different kind of uh, MISPICO formats that uh, you can have. Suppose it's a diagnostic study, then we can have uh, this, uh, whether this uh, can loss of smell, because you have seen that many patients, they come presented with the loss of so, means, smell, right? And we can ask, oh, aapko shayad or symptomatic COVID hua hai. Symptom bhi nahi, lekin smell gaya to means COVID hua hai, kyunki so, both are patients ko hua tha. So, such kind of questions means the PICO's formats we can develop. For the prognosis, do people with COVID-19 having coexisting diabetes or hypertension fare worse? Or what proportion of patients with COVID-19 have the, have or develop acute respiratory distress, uh, distress syndrome? So, in that way, we can frame the questions. Now, once we this, uh, frame the questions and we know this, uh, this uh, PICO, then accordingly, we need to develop our search, um, search terms. So for developing the search term, before that, we should know that what kind of mis, uh, mis, uh, this uh, databases we are having. So in literature search and searching process, the first step is to formulate your PICO questions. Second, try the different kind of secondary sources, choose the primary database, then combine the text different words, and then filter for the right types of the studies, right? So at the end, you will have one very good uh, search strategy, so that once you uh, that, uh, use that search strategy, you will get so many references, and one click, you can download all these uh, references or this files, and then by using different kind of reference manager, right? 
you can have your own means uh, that uh, that library with you and uh, just by uh, doing some uh, commands you will have all the pdfs with you at a one time so just want to know that how many of you know about the reference managers i basically use that endnote endnote zotero right mendeley these are the reference manager these are different kind of like databases like Medline, Embase, Synthal, Scopus, and Cochrane and the Trips. And these are different uh, search engines are there, PubMed, Ovid, Scopus, and Cochrane and the Google Scholar. So these are the few snapshots where you can, uh, you can search these uh, different kind of papers in the Trip databases. Basically, you can see the, the papers, then different <laughs> kind of search strategies you can also build here. Then so, means uh, I'm not showing you the slides, but most of these databases uh, covers all the uh, uh, papers. So, if you gone to the various uh, all databases, if you see any systematic review or meta analysis has been done, or the see a systematic review where the researcher they have used uh, all databases, then you can uh, have good confidence means he has got lot means maximum papers so if suppose some such as only use a pubmed so those uh, papers that are available in scopus he is going to miss it right so that's why the many databases the re researchers he needs to see so have you used this uh, pubmed anytime okay that's a very good thing right now about searching the literature, you must be aware about these uh, Boolean operators. So just a can one, just uh, right? So and, or, and, not, these are the Boolean operators. So these are basically, they are knowing all the things. So suppose we are having the PICO format or PICO. So which Boolean operators are used in P? Suppose I am having like a research a question that my cardiac infection is more prevalent in the, the uh, persons, so these adult persons, right, or this geriatric population, and now it's now the age is again coming. Even middle age, young adults, they are having the MI, right? So here, suppose my population is there. So what kind of different uh, means words we can use, like for the eco, eco population, like adults, young adults, right? So, so adults or young adults or we have used. So within the P domain we are using or 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 adult or young adult or geriatric. Yes, suppose depending upon our research question. Then in between the domains we need to use and, right? So that there will be a comprehensive search terms. Because once we use this AND, so we will only miss, the, even though there are so many references are there, but since your search strategy you have maintained, so that you will focus that my interest is only that by different terms means my focus will be there, so that it will reduce your efforts and even your time, because time is very much precious, right? So if it is, uh, if there is a, if you use the Boolean operator not, means you are again very much specific. So I want so many literature, but I don't want this because that is not my research question or that is not come under my research object too. So at that time, you can also use not. So there, again, there are different ways of uh, means uh, using this uh, truncated search terms. So the use of the asterisk, right, is again one like immunization, immunity, huh? vaccination, vaccines, right? So at, so for that, you can use the truncated terms also. So these are the important things. So searching is one of the key points in information finding in medical practice. We should begin with formulating the PICO questions. Secondary sources are usually easier to read and primary searching skills will improve only when you try to search more and more by yourself. So this is one small exercise you can have it. Try to ask one patient if, or maybe your other colleague, if he is having any, with any symptoms or so. What causes the disease? How was the disease diagnosed? How was the patient treated? What is the natural history of the disease? And then 
you can consider the formulating your because. So again, I thank all these organizations who has helped me in learning all these techniques. Thank you.